Thank you very much. Can you all hear me out there? All right. Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. Did uh, anyone go to the after party last night? Show of hands. No. Everybody have a good time? Some of us had too much of a good time. <laughs> uh, so. um, well, we're going to talk about how to tweak your WordPress theme. And I think oh, straight off I'll just sort of give you a bit of background how I got into WordPress and where it's taken me. Um, about two years ago now, so I'm, I still feel like a newbie uh, when you talk to some of the guys who have been doing it since day dot. But uh, two years ago, I found WordPress. I was doing HTML, CSS sites, static sites. Uh, heard a little bit of a buzzword about CMSs. Looked into a couple, you know, <coughs> Drupal and Joomla. Uh, uh, but ultimately, WordPress came out on top. It was the the best platform I could find. Um, so I started coming to meetups, learning about it, doing a lot of study, and now I develop websites for the clients purely on WordPress uh, platform. Of course, doing that, you've got to learn to do a lot of things <laughs> to WordPress. So why do we need to customise a theme? The beauty of WordPress is you can install WordPress, download a theme which is almost identical to what you want, and away you go. So, in a lot of brief, you know, like, I find it hard to believe that you actually need to customise a theme. There's a lot of customization in your themes. So, why do you need to? Um, just to show our hands, who, who is a user? Who, who just has a, a WordPress website? And who would consider themselves a developer, like a... Okay, and who hates putting their hands up when asked to put their hands up? Yeah. Okay. Why do we need to customise a site? It, straight out of the box, they're pretty good. Yeah, web, the website's done. Well, they're never really done. But pers if you've got a personal blog, a personal website, you can download a theme and look, it's going to work pretty well straight out of the box. If you're a developer developing sites for clients, uh, you probably know that's never going to happen. Uh, you, you'll download a theme for a client and they'll go, hmm, that's not quite right. <laughs> can we make that font a little bit bigger? Can we make that background colour different? Can we make dancing ponies come out of it? They always want something. So that we, we need to customise them. We need to change them. We need to make them different, more personal, better, sometimes. So how do we customise a WordPress theme? Best practice is we use a child theme. So we start with a theme you like. It might have pretty much 90% of the, what you need. Might have the right layout. Might be just that little bit you need to change. Maybe you have to change the whole thing. So we start with a child theme. Does everybody know what a child theme is? Yes, no? 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 <laughs> okay, a child theme is basically you're making a copy of the original theme. So you download a theme, say X theme, you download it, you then make another folder which becomes like basically a child of that theme. It still has all the functionality of the original theme, but when you make changes in it, the changes stay in that part of the theme and if you upgrade the original theme it's not going to break. So it's a, it's a, a safeguard. If you go into it, you can customise any theme inside the theme itself. But when you do that, if they do an upgrade, up, do, you know, an update, and they change that bit of code, it's going to break that whatever you've done. So by using a child theme, you, you're using a safeguard to stop that from happening. The other thing we do to customise the theme, and this is just like the tools we're using, we use a browser, oh, personally, I use a browser developer tools. So when you're in Chrome, got Firefox, Chrome, there's an uh, you know, inspect element and you can bring up the CSS and the HTML for on the web page. Uh, an FTP client, we use that to upload the changed data to the WordPress theme. And uh, you'll use a code editor to change the code. Now, this for the, the users out there, that's going to sound a lot to take in, but 
If you wait till the end of the uh, presentation, I'll show you an easy way of doing it. So what is a child theme and why should we use one? Like I just sort of explained earlier, a child theme is a theme that inherits the functionality and styling of another theme called the parent theme. Child themes are the recommended way of modifying an existing theme. This is straight from the WordPress codex. So, from the horse's mouth, so to speak. There's a few reasons you want to use a child theme. If you modify a theme and it's updated, then your modifications may be lost. By using the child theme, you'll ensure that your modifications are preserved. Using a child theme can speed up development time. And using a child theme is a great way to learn about WordPress theme development. It's kind of a safe way because you're not actually altering the, the initial theme. So if you do something wrong, you delete that folder and you're back to the normal theme. This is, once again, from the WordPress Codex, and this is exactly how you'd set up a child theme. You take your original theme, so let's say it's 2015. We create a new folder. We call that 2015 child. Now, it doesn't matter what you call it. The name is irrelevant. But uh, best practice is to actually call it child. But I mean, you can call it XYZ. It doesn't matter. But if you want to sort of yeah, make it a bit easier for yourself. If you call it the original name of the, of the theme and the child after that, it's a lot easier to understand what it is. Inside of that folder, we put a functions PHP file and a style.css file. Now, for those who aren't coders, and that seems a little bit uh, too much to take in, it's actually really quite easy. And, there's a, and this is the CSS file. Now, style.css is the main style uh, CSS file that controls the style on most of the WordPress themes. So what we're doing is just creating a new one, a blank one, and you add this little bit of uh, code at the top. In all that code, there's really only two bits of code that you need, which is the theme name and the template. The theme name is the name you're giving the theme. So in this case, 2015 child. The theme uh, the template is the temp that's the theme that we're copying from, if they can understand. So that's the, the, the parent of the child theme. So what it's basically doing is it's saying, okay, this is a new theme, but all the functionality is coming from the parent. All that other stuff, that's that that helps when you look at a theme in the WordPress backend, and you see all the information that comes up. That's what generates all that. So, you know, a theme URI, description, the author. So if you're making this yourself, you put your name in there. Um, you can have a URI for yourself. Uh, version number, so if you're doing multiple versions, you can keep track of the versions. Um, and all this other stuff. I mean, it, to be totally honest, if, if you had none of that except for the theme name and the template, it still works. So all the rest is just window dressing if you need it. So, once again, the template line corresponds to the directory name of the parent theme, and the parent theme in our example is the 2015 theme, so the template will be 2015. The only required child theme file is style.css, but functions.php is necessary to enqueue styles correctly. Now, this is a bit more into the technical PHP part of it, but with the PHP file, but just know that if you, all you had was that folder and the styles.css with that little bit of code, your child theme will work. But best practice is to have the PHP file, which is this. So we, to finish it off, we enqueue the parent and child theme style sheets. So basically it's, it's enqueuing, which is a PHP term, enqueuing the, uh, the styles uh, to tell the WordPress uh, what it's doing. Um, if you're not a PHP developer, you basically copy and paste that, and you're golden. Um, you, of course, you'd use the, uh, the script name, the uh, style name, whatever the style name is. It's generally style.css. So that's all you need to make a child theme. Pretty, it really is easy. Next thing, if we're going to be doing this, personally, I use a browser developer tool. So when you're in Google, which is my browser of choice, 
you can right click on a web page as you've got your browser up, right click, go inspect element. It will bring up this little page here. What this is, is a basically a readout of the uh, HTML and the CSS, which you can then interact with. The beauty of this is you can make changes to the web page with the, with the code and it's, it tells you all the code and you sort of change it on the site and the right hand side you see that box down the right hand side you can go in there and change it and it will reflect immediately on the web page it doesn't actually change the web page it's only affecting it in the browser as you see it so you're not destroying your web page you just it's like a, a you know a try before you buy let's see what this does you're not breaking anything you can go nuts and if, if it goes all wrong you sit refresh and it's back to normal it's really good for those who are just learning um, and are, are too scared to sort of play around with the actual code. This is a way to do it kind of in a sandbox environment. But the beauty of it too is if you do get it right, if you change something and, and it works, you can just copy and paste that into the actual code and you've changed your website. How we do that, we go back to the style sheet. I'd, so basically, you'd have a, you, you create a file, style.css, you put that bit of code in. Underneath that code, you put your CSS. That then reads that instead of the original theme CSS. So the changes you make in there will reflect on your website in a live environment. Once again, you can, if you're not good at code, you can copy and paste. So you sort of muck around with the uh, browser tools, find what works. You might Google it. Uh, I, I Google things a lot. Um, if you're not sure what you're doing, you just Google, hey, how do I do this? Um, you find the answer, you put in the code, see if it works, um, and you're done, pretty much. Um, so I use the um, Google, the Firefox has got uh, Firebug, and I'm, I'm sure all the, I know all the others have got their own, uh, IE and, and all that. That's a bit of uh, CSS code for people who aren't CSS savvy. Uh, CSS is really easy. It, it looks daunting, um, but to be totally honest, you could learn CSS in a weekend. Uh, go to W3 Schools, they have a free course. There's been free courses all over the internet. But I'd recommend if you're not good with CSS and not good with HTML, go to W3 Schools, spend a weekend, do their little online course, and by the end of the weekend, you'll have a much greater grip on the whole experience. Um, and if you're looking at customising your theme, it really is a good, that's where you need to go. Um, I know it started, it, the, the sort of blurb for this uh, talk was, you know, without years of coding experience. and I'd, while you still need to learn code, you don't need years of experience to learn how to do it. A lot of the um, CSS code is very simple. Colour, black. Um, it's very, very intuitive. Very easy to learn. An FTP client, does anybody know what an FTP client is? It's basically a way to interact with your server where your WordPress uh, f uh, site lives. Uh, basically, way you can sort of, it's like adding an extra drive to your computer which actually houses the, uh, the website. So you use, I use FileZilla, there's a lot of other ones out there. Uh, so you can basically do the code on your computer, when you're finished, you upload it and it goes live on the website. Sounds daunting, but once you get into it, it's quite easy and there's once again, Google will help you out greatly with that, if you're not into it. I know a lot of people out here are probably going, yeah, I know how to use this. <laughs> so, but um, I suppose there's a lot of people who don't, so that's why I'm trying to uh, sort of cover all the bases here. A code editor. Does everybody, anybody use a code editor? I use Notepads, uh, Notepad++. It's um, <laughs> free, it's very easy to use, there's so many out there. I, I, could mention half a dozen, but Google Code Editor, find one that you like, try them all, most of them are free. Um, try a couple, and basically a code editor is like, has anybody used Notepad? Just a simple Notepad in Windows. It's virtually, you can actually use Notepad to create code. 
Notepad++ is just an advanced version of Notepad. Um, in fact, when I started doing websites, I just used Notepad. I just um, put all the code into that, you rename it to what the file needs to be, and you upload to the website and you're done. Um, very easy. Uh, there are some of the code editors now, they give you hints, they give you tips, uh, they colour code so it makes it easier to understand. Um, but I, just find one that you like. And, you know, there's no one size fits all. Everybody has their, you know, like everybody uses different computers, everybody uses different operating systems. You find something that works for you. Okay, we're getting to the easy way. A lot of people when they're starting out, they, they look at all that and they go, oh, I don't want to learn all that, I just want to change the background. I just want to do it easy. This is kind of a, it's not the wrong way, but it's a kind of an easy way. As in WordPress, we have an abundance of plugins. If you search child theme plugins, you'll find probably about half a dozen. All that stuff that I just told you how to do it, it will do it for you like that. You pick your parent theme, it will create the child theme. It'll do it in about five. There's a couple that have more, got more functionality than others. They, they'll, let you, they'll sort of go further than that and let you do other stuff. Some are what I call a drive-by plugin. You install it, you create the child theme, you uninstall the plugin, and you're done. It will create the CSS file, it'll create the PHP file, and then you go from there. Uh, now, FTP clients, for those who are a bit scared of the FT, FTP client, in WordPress there's a, a backdoor to that as well. Under appearance, you'll see a little tab that says uh, editor, appearance editor. Um, if you click on that, it actually brings up, this is the, the uh, screen there, and it will bring up the files that are in the current theme. You can actually edit it in that. So that's your code editor and your FTP taken care of in that one part of WordPress. So. For those who don't want to get so far into it like, like a, you know, a full-on coder, that's, that's probably the quick and easy way to do it. Find a theme that you like, okay, you want to change a couple of things, you go onto Google, you find the code that's making that happen, and then you uh, put a plugin theme, child theme plugin, go to the code editor in WordPress, and you're done. Simple and easy. My tips, <laughs> learn the base. For those who don't know HTML and CSS and, and you want to take the WordPress sites a little bit further, definitely, definitely learn HTML and CSS. It really is easier than it looks. Um, PHP, I'm, I'm, PHP is a little bit harder, but once you learn HTML and CSS, it becomes easier and you don't need to learn at all. Um, just sort of, I'm, I'm a big believer in learning what you need. Um, when I come across a problem, I, I try and learn what I need to solve that problem, and then I've learnt it. Um, but trying to learn everything at once when you don't have a use for it, I tend to find you forget that and you don't use it. I mean, that's, that's just my way of learning. So find the tools that work for you. Like I said, there's a lot of coding tools, FTP, there's uh, all sorts of things. Find, have a look at a lot of them. A lot of them are free. A lot of them you can just download, try it, see how it works, um, and away you go. Google is your friend. Now, everybody knows how good Google is. If you're looking for new camping equipment or whatever, you Google it. If you're looking for where the nearest subway is, you, know, you Google it. If you're looking for a bit of code that's going to make your theme look better, Google it. Um, you'll be surprised. Be specific. I want some code that does this. Um, you will find that somebody's done it, put it on the web, and it saves you about two hours' work. So that's probably one of the greatest things you can do. And just don't be afraid to play with the theme. Don't be afraid to, you know, break it, if, especially if it's not a live site. You know, if you've got a site that you're developing in the background, don't be afraid to try and break it and, and see what you can do with it. If it is a live site, you can use that Google browser or any browser tools, the developer tools, to play with a site live without doing any damage to actual site. And most importantly, have fun. I mean, 
you look at a lot of these guys who are full on coders and, and they're having a ball. They, re they love it. it. While it looks daunting to start with, it really is a lot of fun. Um, and that's the main thing with, with life. You want to have fun with it. So. And finally, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. Does anyone have any questions for Ricky about child themes or any other things about bending things to your will? No. Yes. Great. There's <laughs> always got to be one question. I'm not too bad with HTML and CSS, but why would you do it the long way if you could just add a plugin? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good question. Um, we talk, well, well, I used to do it the long way because you sort of get when you do code and, and do you, you know when you develop you feel this I should do it this way because that's the proper way to do it and plugins are, aren't the right way to do it. But to be totally honest, it is the quicker and easier way. I, I showed you the, the right way to start with because that's the way it's done. And that's if you had to do it from scratch, that's how you do it. But it is such a simple process to set up that child thing that they. You know, it's just a, a very simple plugin. I found one originally that um, it basically you installed it, you, you told it what theme you wanted to well, actually just picked up the theme you were using at the time, and you sort of hit one button. It created all the files, and it, you were done. Um, and we did have a one of the uh, meetups. We we actually talked about child themes, and and the person giving that talk, <coughs> excuse me, said. Um, Said, oh, don't use don't use plugins, don't use plugins. And I thought to myself, okay, like, like, I can sort of see where they're coming from, you know, like plugins are bad and all this. But at the end of the talk, I said, well, I actually use plugins to create child themes. I said, I use it one that just creates a child theme and, and you uninstall the plugin. He goes, well, actually, that's not a bad idea <laughs> because it's not actually doing anything bad. It's creating. As long as it creates the child theme the way it's supposed to be, the way I just showed you, creates a CSS file, a PHP file, and then you uninstall the plugin, there's no harm in it. Um, so yeah, why would you do it the long way? Don't. <laughs> if you want to do it the long way, you can. But per me personally, I install a plugin, <coughs> and it's done. You know, when you're developing and it's, you times your money, it, it makes sense to kind of outsource that work to a plugin. No, well you'll see the no, you can't you can't tell because it's still creating, and and if you create, I mean, when you create that that same system by hand, you, you're going to end up with the same thing, and and everybody's different, but I mean the the basic things are the same. So yeah, the, you can't tell. So there you go, your life use the plugin, and and the same with the FTP and I generally use the FTP and the code editor, but every now and then I want to be a bit quick and dirty and I'll just go straight into the, the editor through WordPress back end and just change the code on there and it really doesn't make any difference. It's just easier. But if I'm already <coughs> I have the FTP up and I'm doing something else with the FTP, well I usually use that. Um, but yeah, so I hope that answers your question. We had a question over there. My question is uh, can you actually recommend one, a plugin? Um, I can't, I can't remember the, uh, look, to be totally honest, just um, go to the, uh, add, you know, go add a plugin, uh, just type child theme, have a look at them all, there's what, there are a couple, because a couple, there is one that sort of adds a lot more functionality, it can do a lot more, it's a, it's the kind of plugin that you will actually keep on, it will uh, do, it's got a lot of functionality, but there's uh, another one that I, I tend to use more often than not, and it, I can't look to be honest, I should have wrote it down, <laughs> but um, that they tend to change a lot too. Um, the plugin I use today, I, I do a search every time I, I look for it, and um, and you'll find two or three new ones. And I try to te yeah, test out new ones all the time and see what they're like. But um, it, there's a one you'll see. It's like a, a very it just says child theme creator or something like that. Um, and it, when you re just go in and read the description of it, and it'll sort of say it will. It just basically creates the files and that's it. That's that's probably the best one if you're learning because it, the, 
There's another one that I was, like I was saying, it's got a lot more functionality, you can do a lot more with the CSS, but I even I find it a bit confusing. Um, whereas one that just creates those two files very quickly and easily is, is the best way. And Selena gave a good talk yesterday about um, choosing a plugin. So if you are going to use a plugin, make sure you read um, the, the stars, the notifications, um, the comments, and look at how many active installs there are to make sure that it's supported. Because the last thing you want to do is build your site on a plugin that's not supported and going to break your site in the future. So that's, yeah. One more question. What's your experience uh, of uh, trying to create child themes with uh, platforms such as uh, the Cherry Framework, for example? Yeah, Cherry Framework. You yeah, see, so that's a, that's a hard one because, well, not a hard one. You, it's I've actually just uh, last week downloaded a theme with Cherry Framework, so I'm just I know what you're talking about. Cher Cherry Framework. It's a it will a framework is it's kind of they use a child theme to make the theme. So with a framework, for those who don't know the framework, a framework is like a bare bones of a WordPress theme. And then what you do, so you get a, a framework and then you get, they can use one framework to make many themes. And all they do is they sell you the framework and then they sell you a child theme which creates the look of the, of the theme. So what you, to make a child theme on a, say a framework, you can make a child theme of a child theme. And yet you can do that. Um, quite easily. So all you do is you, because you'll install that theme and the Cherry Framework will be there, then the, the theme folder which is it virtually a, a child theme, so then you just child theme off that theme. Yeah, and it will work perfectly. Yeah, if anyone has any more questions about frameworks or child themes, Ricky will be around outside, so can we give him a warm thank you? Thank you. Thanks, Ricky.